rye bread. Now, rye bread is a totally different kettle of fish because if you want to bake a traditional rye bread, then you would also want to bake it with sourdough. And a sourdough bread with uh, the real thing is, of course, a magnificent uh, bread. But normally, uh, people like, like myself who are on the move don't have time to make these things because it'll take you a week to get the sourdough going. And uh, I cannot wait a week after I come back from a trip in order to make a bread like that. So I've learned to make a cheating rye bread where I skip the whole process and just use normal yeast to bake the bread. But I still want to tell you how to make a sourdough so that you can bake the bread without any yeast whatsoever. Now we're just going to make a simple bread today, a 40% rye bread, but before I do that I want to demonstrate how to make a sourdough. Now, you can make a sourdough with many ingredients. You can use potato flour, you can use normal flour, you can use rice flour. There are many ways to make a sourdough, but if you want to make a German rye bread, then it has to be a rye sourdough, or else it's not a rye sourdough. And it's very simple to make, but it's quite a process. You take one cup but you can also make smaller quantities. You can take, uh, sorry, not one cup, a half a cup. But you could also use a quarter cup if you want to stretch the process because you'll see what will happen in a moment. I'm using a half a cup, which is probably close to 100 grams of flour. And I'm adding this to the bowl. You can use a bigger bowl later because it's going to get more and more and more. And you take an equal quantity of lukewarm water. So you're taking a half a cup of water and you're adding it to your rye flour. Then you mix the two. Now this is going to be a very soft mix. Now what is happening here is called magic. You see, God saw fit to place one bacterium in particular in the atmosphere. So as we are working now, all around us there are lactobacteria. Now lactobacteria are the ones that cause fermentation. So when you do something like this and you're adding the air into the mix, so you're whipping the air in, so you do it you know, like you would beat something. Get the air in there, mix it around, mix it around, get the air in there. Now that you have the air in there, what will happen is, slowly, slowly, the lactobacteria that are in there, the lactobacillus, will start fermenting the carbohydrates in this flour. And in the process, they produce lactic acid. And lactic acid is sour. Now, lactic acid is an acid that the human being can cope with very well because we have numerous enzymes throughout the body system that cope with lactic acid. Uh, we don't cope well with acetic acid. We only have one enzyme system in the liver that copes with acetic acid, but lactic acid is one that we cope with very well. And we have also the right type of bacteria down in the intestine which utilize uh, these components. So lactic acid is not one that is harmful to the body. And uh, the interesting thing is, this will now start fermenting over time. But now you have to feed it because the bacteria are going to use up the carbohydrates. And so tomorrow, this baby 
needs to be fed. So tomorrow you take another half a cup of rye flour, you add it to the mix, equal quantity of water, mix it in, beat in the air again, and over a period of about five or six days, if you keep it at around about 20 to 25 degrees centigrade, so a comfortable room temperature, not in the direct sun, not in the cold, but somewhere where it's sort of comfortable, like you would keep a baby, then it will start bubbling. And when it starts bubbling, it will start smelling sour because of the lactic acid that is being produced. And when you smell it, you smell this pungent sour smell. That's fine. If you have wrong bacteria in your house, if you have Staphylococcus or one of those bad fellows in there, then it won't smell sour, it'll actually stink. And when it stinks, all you can do with it is dump it and start all over again. So this has to be taken care of like a baby. Now of course, it's going to grow. And if I've added 100 grams of flour today, that's a half a cup, and tomorrow I add another 100 grams, then I have 200 grams of flour in there, and 200 grams of water in there, and it's doubling and bubbling and carrying on and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and eventually I'll have a whole kilogram of the stuff, seven cups of it, well then I better start baking a bread with it. And initially, this baby is in its growing boots. It's slowly growing and getting stronger. Now when I use the first batch and I bake a rye bread, then I must remember that half of what is in here is rye flour and half of what is in here is water. So if I have one kilogram of this, then I actually have 500 grams of rye flour. So that would be about five cups of rye flour. Then I could take two cups of this to make up the seven cups, add it to that, and start kneading it in, and then I would be able to make a rye bread. But the trouble is, it's not strong. So initially you might want to help it by adding some yeast. But eventually you want to get to the point where you don't have to add any yeast whatsoever. So what you do is when you use your first batch, keep about a hundred grams behind, about a cup full, and you start your next batch with that. And then the bacteria get stronger and more bacteria come in and it gets stronger and eventually it can push up a dumbbell and go, and that's what you want it to do in the bread. It has to push the bread up so that it can rise and it has to be a strong, youthful character. And then it becomes very precious to you. Now if you're going away and the baby needs feeding and you're worried about it, you can put it in the fridge, but like any baby it doesn't like being in the fridge, so don't keep it in the fridge too long. You must then take it out again, give it a little bit of food, whip in the air, and start the fermenting process all over again. And if it should go bad, you have to throw it away and start all over again. So we're not going to do it that way. We're going to skip the whole process, but we want to simulate it. And so we will bake a bread as though we are baking a sourdough bread, but it's not the real thing. It's a fake bread, but it'll do. We are now going to bake a simple rye bread which has no sourdough in it, so we'll have to use normal yeast. Again, we're just going to use the ordinary dried yeast. This is a 10 gram pack. And we're going to put the ingredients in this bowl, the dry ingredients. Now here are the dry ingredients. So we're going to, again, use 7 cups of flour in total. And to make a 40% rye, four cups will be brown bread flour. So four cups of brown bread flour. And then to make a 40% rye, 
we're going to take three cups of rye flour. Now it has a totally different consistency. It's finer, it's heavier. One. Two. And if you look at the color, you can see this is unbleached flour because it sort of has this gray color. All right, there we have a 40% rye mixture. And we're going to mix the two flours. Now we're cheating because we're not using a sourdough. But we're not going to tell anyone, and uh, you really have to know the difference. But once you really bake a sourdough bread one, you will always want to do it, so we won't do that now. But this one is a very good second choice. Good, we need a tablespoon of salt. Bread needs salt, the yeast works better in a little bit of salt. Too much salt, then you inhibit the yeast, yeast again. So one tablespoon of salt to the mixture. Now Germans are an odd brand, and uh, Germans like to add caraway seed to rye bread. Now, some people cannot stand caraway seed, but if you have German blood, then a rye bread without caraway seed is not a rye bread. So, seeing that I have German blood, I'm going to be a German, and I'm going to add caraway seeds. Now, normally they say you add you know, about the same as you added the salt, but me, I'm a fanatic when it comes to this, so I'm going to add two tablespoons of that, of caraway seed. And I want to cheat a little bit because, again, it's a denser flour and a denser um, consistency, so we also want to have the flour and the dough to be firmer than we had on the normal brown bread dough. We add about four cups of water to this, but it has to be quite firm, and we mustn't forget our yeast. Now again, I actually prefer using the wet yeast and making a mixture again in the water, adding the yeast, add a little bit something sweet to make it go, like molasses or a teaspoon of sugar, or honey, or anything that you want. So one 10 gram packet of instant yeast. And then we'll mix the dry ingredients together. So what is in here now? Three cups of rye flour, four cups of brown bread flour, caraway seeds, if you like them, if you don't, you leave them out. and. One more thing, a sourdough bread has a particular flavor and uh, it's a little bit, well, a little bit sour. That's why it's called a sourdough. And I can simulate that by cheating a little bit and I do that by adding the juice of half a lemon. So we'll take half a lemon. You don't have to do this, but that's if your German perfectionist streak gets hold of you. I'll just add it to the water. And then we need a tablespoon of something sweet. Again, I'm going to use molasses. It gives the bread a nice color as well. But as I said, you can use anything. And even if you want to liquidize a, a fruit, like an apple or something like that, and put it in there. So this is a rapid dry. 
simulating the sourdough but much faster. Now because there's rye flour in this, it's going to be a lot stickier when you mix it. So it takes a little bit more effort to wash your hands afterwards again to get it all off. But again, if you want to be a real bread baker, then you must use your hands to do this. And we'll see there's a, there's a totally different kneading process in the end as well. So here we go. I'm not going to add all the water, so we can first see what the consistency is like. And we certainly can add all of it. Now, this is far more like clay than a normal brown bread because the, the consistency of the rye flour is totally different. Now you go through your kneading process again. This is a nice consistency. Again, it just breaks. You don't want it to break. You want it to form the gluten, and the brown bread flour helps you to get that. So that it's not quite such a dense bread. Now, rye bread, bread needs far more elbow grease than the other one. And we're going to make a freestanding bread. So, once we've allowed this mixture to rest a while, we'll go through a second kneading process. It takes far more elbow grease. You really have to punch it. Now, if you were to make a 60% rye or 100% rye, it would be even stickier than this. See, I can lift the bowl. That's what you want. Of course you can use a machine, again, if you want to. If you have one with a nice hook on it, you can do that. But that's cheating. I like to give it a twist. And the twist should get tougher and tougher as you go along. Perfect. Uh, 
This is very sticky stuff. So we just cover it up and let it rest until it has risen about double. Our rye bread has now risen beautifully. Let me show you. Look at that. Well, you can see that that can make two rye breads or one very large rye bread. But now we first have to go through a process. Now normally when you have everything that you need for a rye bread, you have baskets in the shape of a rye bread. And uh, you can buy them at speciality baking stores. Now we don't have those here with us, so we're going to improvise. And it's always fun to improvise, so we're going to take just two little round bowls and we're going to put our dough into these round bowls, but we don't want them to stick to the round bowls because you can see they stick like crazy. So what we will do is we will take something like cheesecloth and we will pop it into this bowl. to make sure it doesn't stick. Something like that. Now if you had the nice little um, woven baskets, then you can also give those shapes to the rye bread and the lines and everything that makes the rye bread look so good. Now we'll just put it in there and we'll add lots of flour. You can add brown bread flour or you can add white bread flour. It doesn't really matter. It's just not to make it stick. And we'll put that around there. And we'll do the same with the second one. And we'll put some flour in that. Just to make sure it doesn't stick. And then we have to mix and uh, knead this dough. Now we can take rye flour or we can take ordinary flour. This is now. And we're going to scrape this out. Now I'm going to put some flour down here for myself. And I'm going to put it on this table. And I'm going to make my hands full of flour. Some flour on top, some more around the side, and just knead it into a sausage. Keep mixing the flour in. If it gets sticky, you add some more flour. Knead it into a sausage, fold it over, carry on. This is like pottery. Just so that it doesn't stick. And you can see it gets a nice rubbery consistency. So this is totally different from the very simple brown bread. And you can see the consistency is beautiful. It's sort of Hangs like that. Isn't that gorgeous? Now if this were baked with sourdough, well then it would take hours to rise and if it's a little bit cool, you might want to do this just before you go to bed. 
and see what it looks like tomorrow morning. <laughs> but we've cheated, so this should take just as long as any normal bread, an hour or so, and it should be just fine. I'm just going to cut this in half. That's two loaves. Now if you wanted to make a long ro loaf, you would just do that. And you would put that into a little basket, like that, and let it rise, double. Then you'd have two loaves of rye bread. So we're going to make a round one, so we're... Just going to make a round little bowl like this. And we're going to pop it in there. And we're going to let it rise in there. And the only reason why we do that, you can, you can just put it on a plate too, but then it tends to go very flat. This way it has to go up. And we'll do the same with the second one. There. Now we'll just let them rise and bake them again in a very hot oven. Now this time you want the oven very hot. Rye bread likes to have that nice leathery consistency. So put the oven at the highest level that it'll go. Normally a good oven will go to 250 degrees. That's almost 500 Fahrenheit. That's very hot. And you put it in there and uh, bake it in that hot oven. Now if you want to be really technical, then you can put a little bowl in there and make it very hot in the process. And then you, just before you bake it, you throw some water in there so it goes psh, lots of steam in your oven and you close your oven. So then it gets that leathery consistency from the steam in the oven as well. Of course you're not going to leave it at 250. You're just waiting till the shape is stabilized. Then you take the temperature down to 220 and then down to 200 and you bake it for the rest of the baking time. Loaves this size, 50 minutes, maximum an hour. Well, our rye bread has risen beautifully in our makeshift bowls. We did this just to show you that you can use anything. You don't have to use all the fancy equipment. It's nice to have it, but if you don't have it, then it doesn't matter. Doesn't that look gorgeous? And now we're going to take a Grease pan, an open pan, and I'm going to take my watch off because I don't want dough in it. And then we're gently, 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 because you don't want it to drop, fold it out and put it on very gently. See, that's why we have this cloth that it doesn't stick. Now it'll still rise in the oven. We'll do the other one. You can use any shape. The shape that you use is the shape that you'll get. Now very gently, you don't want it to fall. go and straight into the oven.
very gently at the very highest heat. Well, we are now ready to take our rye bread out of the oven. Let's see what happened to it. Mm. It's a nice round little rye bread. Hmm. Hot. Let me just put it there and show you. It's nice and light. It has risen. You could, if you wanted to, before you put it in the oven, give it a cut. But uh, I normally just leave it and it doesn't matter if it rises there a little bit. That's fine. And uh, I think it came out nice. It's got a nice hollow sound, so it rose very nicely. Oops, it's hot. And I think it's just beautiful. So we'll just leave it there, cover it up, let it cool down, and then we will eat it. Well, this is our little rye bread that we baked. You can see that it's pliable now, that it's cooled down. And we're just going to cut the slice as we did. And you can see the surface is different to the brown bread. And, uh, well, we can look at the, the edge here. And again, you can see how pliable and bouncy it is. Now, the bubbles inside this one are not as big as they would be in a normal brown wheat bread because there's less gluten, because there's rye in here. But it's still light and uh, risen to double its size and pliable and bendable. And that's the indication that the gluten has developed well, that the bread is well baked, that it's light. And because it has all of those extra ingredients, the smell is delightful.